All right. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to the county Atchison County Commission meeting for Monday, January 8th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And if you please stand and join Mr. Foremost for the invitation. Welcome. Good morning to each one of you. On this day of organization for the coming year, I want to remind you of one verse in the book of Psalms, an event in King Solomon's life. The one verse is from Psalm 127, verse 1, which reads, Unless the Lord builds a house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. After Solomon had been appointed or anointed king of Israel and his father David had died, then Solomon set about organizing his kingship. And the Lord God spoke to Solomon and said, Ask what I shall give you. Solomon's response was, Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people, for who can govern this people of yours, which is so great? We keep these in mind. Let's pray. Father, thank you for creating order so that our affairs may be organized. I ask you to guide these commissioners in 2024, that your hand will be in what is done and built. May you give them wisdom to govern. Let today be a good beginning to this year. May they plan well their own structure and deal wisely with personnel and insurance matters. May their decisions encourage peace and prosperity in our county. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Because the heat wells are here. <laughs> I didn't even notice that until now. I didn't until I stood up. <laughs> okay. Public comment? Yeah. Okay. Seeing none, approval of the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes from January 2nd, 2024. So moved. Second. Okay. We moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Commissioner comments. Commissioner Hull. Have anything this time? Let me just. Uh, with the weather this coming up this week, be very careful. Please uh, give uh, our county staff and, and township staff uh, time and space to get the roads cleared and uh, be careful of passing. And, and uh, this could be a serious storm. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Um, that, I know um, JCAB meeting this afternoon has been delayed due to the storm. I was also waiting on a response from the Department of Corrections. We've not heard back yet. So here's some today or tomorrow. Okay. So we have, for two reasons, we've just dis decided to reschedule. Okay. Uh, and then uh, also heard a few positive comments regarding the uh, work on the roads last Friday, Saturday. So um, anyway, so good job. Yeah, I echo that. Good comments are all, always feel good. So mm -hmm. it's nice to the guys and gals that are out there clearing them off that they get appreciated. Um, okay, new business. I have a couple items to add to the agenda. Um, I have a purchase order um, from the appraiser for, uh, this is going against the ARPA courthouse renovation uh, funding in the amount of 30,000. The This is going to replace um, a, old electrical lines, um, carpet, all iron for the wall support, um, plaster walls, interior paint, installation of ceiling units, and KC Coring to um, adjoin their separated offices. Do have a motion to approve? It's made out of? The ARPA courthouse renovation liner. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Passes. And just a little bit about that, as that was the previous appraiser had started that project. Um, so we're just kind of seeing it through one thing at a time. Um, I also have a purchase order, thank you, um, from Road and Bridge that is for the 2020 
for fuel um, for EMS, road and bridge, and solid waste. Um, this is to consumer oil and propane uh, in the amount of $142,921.01. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 This is three to zero. Thank you. Any other new business? We're about 10 minutes ahead of schedule. I assume the clerk's going to join us this morning. When we're ready, can I get a, a digital copy of our handbook? Mm -hmm. You want to send it to me? Yep. You want to scrap one? Thank you. The current one that you guys have not approved or the one that we're working on? Uh, both of them. Okay. Uh, All on that. And it don't have to be any time soon. No, I'll go do it all. Um, so, while we have 10 minutes, you guys have been getting uh, the legislative alerts for LAVTR. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? And is, any, is anyone going on Thursday to give testimony? Uh, no, I'll be in Salina, Kansas. <laughs> okay. <need> to be <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. So they've been sending them out. Um, and actually, I was going to ask you because I didn't want to do anything without visiting with you. But we actually got one from Jay Hall on my list, sir, encouraging uh, us to get with your chambers and your cities and your all of your kind of big organizational groups in your county uh, to everyone kind of put pressure on them. And I was wondering if you guys had done anything with that or. I have not. I'm in a unique spot. Well, so I was wondering uh, so about kinda, that. If you're best to just be. Well, yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of staying neutral. I like the idea of getting it back in place, but I think the cards are lined up pretty strong to repeal it down there. Well, so that's what I had read on there. So yeah. I wasn't sure how. Well, if, they hear, if they hear a lot of noise, they're going to rethink that. Um, on that, I think there's also going to be a renewed effort to cap counties what they can spend. And, you know, without this and a, and a cap, things could really. No, they and are and all this stuff. Is yes. Like, yeah. I mean, but it, we don't have any of that to peak. They didn't have to do the R and R. <laughs> they don't have cap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, though. So, um, and who is sending you this? Is this your? Is this so her? Mike Taylor, who's the legislative um, contact for KAC, sends those updates. Do you get those? I haven't been getting them. In, okay. it's, it comes from info at Kansas County Star. And then Mike Taylor sends. Are you signed up for your listserv on? Yeah, I get things from my listserv. Okay, hold on. I'm going to forward you this because it starts with Mike Taylor. Like he always sends the updates to the listservs. And I wonder if he should. Do you get Mike Taylor? Let me look. I was going to say, thing? surely he sends it to all listservs, but I'll send you this. And then Kimberly Falls sends out follow ups and Jay Halls. And I, I get Kimberly Falls. Thanks for the So, like Richard Mom from Jefferson County asked what time was the hearing and then Kimberly uh, responds, and then Jay Hall uh, emailed us saying, KAC would also encourage you to get with your local chambers of commerce, business leaders, and any community groups involved, encouraging them to submit testimony in support of restoring LABTR. So Mark refreshed me this morning because I had that 700,000 number in my head, but that included the county city revenue sharing piece. And I don't think this bill deals with that. They're just dealing with LABTR. Right, it's two issues. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's 280000 approximately. I'm, for I'm not getting the same email you're getting from my dealer, but I'm getting the same information through that info at Kansas counties. Okay, through your listserv problem. Yeah, yeah, so I think, so as far as my dealer, he has sent me some things, but not the same thing. Okay. So I still have the information. So this info at kansascounties.org isn't the listserv. 
correct? Uh, and that's a, that's that newsletter that thing that comes out. Okay, so I could I could yeah, so I, I copy that email down and I will request that I yeah, get that. that one. Well, do the search and see if you're getting any. Just just like just type in what Kansas County is. Type in OVTR on your search and see what you get coming up. Let me see what it's to you. This one's even better. Oh, I copied the email. I'm making the request. I just want this. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I used to get things from that, and I don't know. I think I just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might be from spam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which she probably can see. I think I see. So she sent you the Mike Taylor one. That's what she did for Kansas County. So between the two, you get your moment. Okay. Yeah, and your list serve as the K KS Commissioner's UV2 mm -hmm. at yeah. Kansas County. Yeah. So I didn't think it was. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't. Yeah, see, so you're, no you're, one. You're getting, these are the regular paces. Those are all of that one you didn't search for. Wow. So that's since I've been a commissioner. So there is a regular update. It's a newsletter, I think. Okay. Thank you. It's interesting that it's different. <laughs> so do we want to do anything with this? Or I think you basically want to advocate for it. Yeah, we go down there. Like, yeah, I, I think it would be great. I don't think I can get Thursday. What when is that? Thursday morning? Oh, I know Thursday's out for me. All right. I just Thursday's out for me. But you can you can send like a letter so we we'll do that. Okay. Yeah, I think they said that you can submit testimony even if you can't be there by Wednesday. So maybe we could just talk about what that looks like and making sure yeah. it's just in unison from a simple us. letter. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. And the thing is, if they get to 80 counties, citizens, so it's, it's, it, it, they'll hear it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks. You're, on, you're like two steps in front of us. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, so 1015, uh, 2024 organizational meeting. You know, we're a couple minutes early if that matters, or we should just. Mm -hmm. Do I need to call a separate meeting, or it's just within, so we're fine? Um, I think it's been done both ways in the past, so. It's just it's just an agenda item. Okay. Okay. So the Atchison County Organizational Meeting agenda for January eighth, twenty twenty four, to nominate a chairperson for twenty twenty four. I move nominate Commissioner Quinn and the chairman. All second. Well, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> outvoted apparently. <laughs> so it's been moved and seconded. Sure, sure won't. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I don't know if I can or abstain. Denominate a vice chairman. You better believe in yourself. We believe in you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to nominate vice chair men for 2024. Commissioner Nolby, vice chair. I would second that. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. That's aye. Aye. Discuss three to zero. Um, speeches or anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, discussion of current committee boards with removal and additions if needed. We added AAEDC, re we removed ASAF board, Atchison Senior Village Board, Chamber Board, Joint Communications Board, um, and we're adding, we're not removing the economic development, which is EDAG, um, a separate, sorry, a separate economic development group um, as well. So the committee boards assigned to commissioners and staff for 2024, Area Agency on Aging. Um, I would like to recommend Eric, Commissioner Knoll. Okay, just I, before we get going, do we vote on every one of these things? And does, does that make it really complicated for, I mean, yes. or I, in the past, I was thinking one year that we like done the document and then we voted to pass it so it was streamlined. Instead of having every vote, you want that? I mean, that would probably make it a lot easier. Okay. Just saying that whoever's going to be on their committee boards and yeah. then 424 and then just approve that as that section. Is, yeah. So then we're not having Our vote after vote four. after vote. Mm -hmm. I, I think that was in the past, that was a request. So, sorry. So, area agency on aging, Eric Knoll? Yes. And we're sticking with that if you wanted to stay because you're the current. Um the uh the well no I'm the treasurer of NECAP. I'm oh. the president of the board, so and they requested that I stay if I could. Okay. Community Corrections Advisory Board, Commissioner mm -hmm. Revis. Yeah. County Health, Commissioner Noll. Yes. JCAB, Commissioner Revis. Any KES? Uh, well, NECAP was me. Oh, sorry. NECAP, a regional board, Eric Knoll. Yes. yes. Any KES, I would take it again. Okay. Commissioner Knoll. Project concern? You know, I've been on that, but if you're you kind of thinned out a little yes, bit, if you want to do that, that'd be fine. Okay. I'll do yeah. project concern. Safety committee, I can do that. It's a thin out if you want. Okay. Solid waste, I can do that again if you guys are. Well, you're in there now? Okay. I was gonna have to use on that one, I wasn't sure. That's pretty balanced. Um, Atchison Area Economic Development, the AAEDC, Commissioner Rebus. Yeah. And EDAG, that's what I'm saying. So we're kept keeping those on the same line, That's even though they're two different organizations. Yeah, but we're both economic related, and there's a lot of crossover. Do you think we should list them? I think we should list them separately, though, just for the fact of like JCAB and. Well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. You think they should be on the one line, even though they're two different organizations? I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's all in just one. I think the intent is the same person should be on both. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I okay. apologize. I take off the EDAG. That's okay. Um, but I will add it back on. Yeah, okay. Can, so, no problem. This will stop better. Mm -hmm. And then we had talked about the Atchison County Extension Board. Um, I feel like it might be better to have them come to us for a quarterly update. Um, just so yeah. if we have more in depth questions or questions, we have a professional here that can answer them. I would agree. Okay. So, we'll ask them to provide quarterly updates. Are we going to want quarterly updates from all appropriations that we get to, or just just extension? Yeah, I do case by case, unless you have some major okay. project. When you're well, historically, by. we asked Jim, like at the chamber before, to come and give us mm -hmm. updates. Yeah. But if we don't feel like it, I just thought I'd mention it. So then, EDAG uh, will be Commissioner Revis. Yep. Okay. Okay. So let me just. Um, Make sure I I'll make one motion. One motion to approve committee boards assigned to commissioners for 2024. Area agency on aging, Commissioner Knoll, Community Corrections Advisory Board, Commissioner Revis, County Health, Commissioner Knoll, JCAB, Commissioner Revis, NEK, oh sorry, NECAP Regional Board, Commissioner Knoll, 
NEK, yes. Commissioner Knoll, Project Concern, Commissioner Quinn, Safety Committee, Commissioner Quinn, Solid Waste Advisory Board, Commissioner Quinn, AAEDC, Commissioner Rebus, Atchison County Extension Board. We will not have a representative, but we can ask them to provide updates as needed. And EDAG, Commissioner Rebus. Do I have a motion to approve those assignments? So moved. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. <clears throat> Item number five, renew Memorial Hall trustee for Larry Services position term expired December 2023. The deadline will be extended for this appointment. Uh, I wanted to double check on this while we're all here as when we have these openings, did we want to forego the deadlines and put until filled until position is filled? I'm just wondering because we had discussed that with previous ones that we had deadlines and then confusion and kind of learned our lesson of what's the best for everyone. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure we give guidance on how we want that. I have been reading, so I, I think the city possibly put out for another county. I've been seeing how other people are doing it. And some of them, it just says this this position will remain open until filled or vacant until filled. Yeah, like this was so specific in my qualifications that it takes some time. Uh, and maybe we could word it uh, taking applications until something. And then we could appoint after that. I mean, because if if you don't have a date for them to turn in their application, I, they, yeah. they might say, oh, I thought I had plenty of time. Or we could say position will be appointed on this date. That way, because that's what we got into when we had the late turn in before our meeting and we accepted it. So it's like, we wanna make sure that up until, and I remember Road and Bridge even when we were at e EOC where someone brought in their bid like to our meeting, like mm -hmm. before we before we vote, right? So if it's like position will be filled this day, then any time up until that moment, mm -hmm. I mean, because we're gonna fill the position. So like, if you wanna bring it in, have it here because the position will be filled at 10 a.m. on, the 16th or whatever day, yeah, uh, right. that kind of might be good because then it's up to you, your discretion. Like if you don't have it in when we vote, you don't. But if it's in, you know. Do we have any applications for this position yet? There has been one turned in. Okay, I knew one was coming. It was yours. It was the one you, you were. Okay. Does that um, sound good to you or what do yeah, you think? I think, you know, accepting letters of interest um, up until the date of appointment on such and such a date. Um, I was going to ask more specifically as far as a date you guys had in mind. Do you want to give them three weeks a month? How much time do you, because I'm going to create a letter, basically the same thing I'm going to put on the website. I'll make sure it gets put on Facebook and I will hand deliver it to Fred and Chuck. Okay. For the Legion and the, um, but do you want it in the weeks. paper? Yeah, let's let's move it along because I mean they I know they want to get some things done. Mm -hmm. Thanks for just saying so, so just say wish well today's the eighth, so by the twenty-third. Twenty-third. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll because this one will be filled on the twenty-third. Thank you for that. And I will get that out. Okay. Thank you. Approve holidays for our county for 2024. Um, 2024. Okay. So the 2024 holidays proposed President's Day, Monday, February 19th, Memorial Day, Monday, May 27th, Juneteenth, Wednesday, June 19th, Independence Day, Thursday, July 4th, Labor Day, Monday, September 2nd, Veterans Day, Monday, November 11th, Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 28th. Thanksgiving Day after, Friday, November 29th. Christmas Eve, Tuesday, December 24th. Christmas Day, Wednesday, December 25th. New Year's Day, Wednesday, January 1st of 2025. And Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Monday, January 20th, 2025. Do I have a motion to approve the holidays as presented for 2024? So moved second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 
passes three to zero. Number seven, approve Columbus Day employee, employee training for Monday, October 14th, 2024. I have a motion to approve. So second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Number eight, approve work session, official meeting dates and times for 2024. And then this has several questions of what works. Um, I'm in favor of keeping how we have been. I think it's been really nice to be able to be having the conversations first time for the public to hear the conversation. Um, I've had really great feedback from constituents that um, if they want to watch, you know, it's there. <laughs> you know, there are longer meetings um, that are videoed, but I think that's good. If you care, then you will watch the meeting. Um, I haven't had any negative feedback about it. I know when we first started, we were kind of trying to figure out that nine to 10 spot for department heads, but I feel like it's been good. Everyone, I just, we've done it at, as you come and everybody's patient and waits. And, you know, if department heads need to talk to us from nine to 10, we're available. Or after the meeting, we've adjourned in a workshop for further time. Um, and Tuesdays seem to work for, for staff. So. I think it's working. I think I do know that the one hour makes it a little tight some weeks, but the idea of a journey into the workshop at the end, if we, we kind of seem like we have kind of a gentleman's agreement, maybe no more than an hour or so if we need to go over some things, but I think it, it's working. Sometimes just follow up and you know, discuss with the department head afterwards. So I just feel for me as a commissioner, I do a better job because we're actually having the conversation the first time the public to hear versus having the conversation in the morning and then talking about it again a second time where I already asked my questions. I know the answers. So it's like why it's more of a motion, like checking the boxes in the afternoon uh, before versus this is like time to ask. But anybody, do you have any comments? For the older system itself. Okay. I like having being able to have a break because sometimes when you come in at nine and you do that, you, you get into these heavy conversations and it's two or three o'clock. We've had really no break and it, it can get almost. I'd, I'd be in favor of putting a little 30 minute break in here for kids somehow. That would be a bad idea. We could recess for 30 minutes. We always do that for a lunch break or something. So I, I feel like if we're going to do that, then we should just short, maybe. Sh I don't know. It's just. Like when we're here to get things done and department heads come here. I mean, I get it, the lunch break piece, but do we just shorten the time? Because we can always extend the time. We can always go beyond one o'clock, but if you need lunch at 1230, I mean, versus taking a half hour between 12 and 1230 to come back for a half an hour. Does that make sense? Like if we're ending at one, I don't know. I'm just kind of a power through, get it done, but. Yeah, I. If you need a lunch break, we can look at that. Maybe. I think we can keep the structure we have. If we want to, we can always recess for thirty minutes and we decide we need to. We're gonna have a long. We know we're gonna be here till three o'clock for some reason. We want to do that. We can oh, do that. right. I mean, just reset. You're saying if we if we know we're gonna be there till late, yeah. then we want a lunch break. We, we know you grab a couple of long. Ones. Yeah. We can always say we're gonna take a thirty minute lunch recess or something it's not just about lunch sometimes you just need to right it's not the brain for 30 minutes. absolutely <laughs> it's, it's as bad as much as that is as having lunch although that's kind of <laughs> my my habit i need uh, to miss lunch <laughs> <laughs> okay so if i'm hearing you right we will keep it the same but we will be mindful of our late days and make sure that we're recessing for lunch yeah and then that would help me a lot. That's good for the entire people watching too. They, they, they need bigger things to do too. That's just trying to follow, you know. Okay. So they need to break. Okay. So approve work session, official meeting dates, and times for 2024. What day of the week do you want to conduct the work session? Tuesday. What time would you like to start your work session? From 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. What day of the week would you like to hold your regular open meetings? Tuesday. What time would you like to start the official meeting? 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Approved date and time of organizational meeting for 2025. No normal meeting on the following Tuesday. The second Monday of the month would fall on January 13th of 2025. I have a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. So what about the other one would be the um, when elections happen and move to Canvas. That's when we have a meeting on that Monday, yes. right? It's a so we should should we list those as well here, or is that necessary? Yes, it's on the back there. Oh, no, not there yet. It's at the very end. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> <laughs> I think last week I looked at it. I knew I read it somewhere. It's been a week ago. Okay. okay. To name the following banks as eligible depositories: the following banks as eligible depositories. Exchange Bank and Trust, UMB, and Union State Bank of Everest, which is Bank of Atchison. No changes from previous year's listing. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Number 11 is a recommendation made by the Atchison County Treasurer to name Exchange Bank and Trust as the main depository for Atchison County. There's a letter submitted to us for that recommendation um, as well attached. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Verification of spending authority for department heads. All department heads were originally set at $2,500. On October 15, 2019, the spending authority for public works was raised to $7,500, with all other department heads remaining at $2,500. So um, the clarification I just want to make on here is since we don't have a public works department, that the spending authority for road and bridge was raised to 7,500. Currently, we don't have one. Um, so I just want to make sure that the understanding of what we're voting on is 7,500 spending the limit for road and bridge. And it would it stay the same then for solid waste? The 2,500. Yes. And all other departments? Yes. So, okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Mileage reimbursement rate for 2024. The IRS is 67 cents per mile. State of Kansas, 65 five cents per mile. This was set for fiscal year 2024 from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024. See attached information. I have a motion to approve the mileage reimbursement as presented. So which one are we approving? 67, 65, 5. What is it currently? 58 plus. 58 plus. Oh, this we so behind already. Well, the cast went crazy. At all. And I, I think it came into play like last July 1st yeah. is when they went up to they the, did, they they did were the prior. Yeah. Because some of us deal with it. We right. went with what the state was at last year. Yeah, that's, that's what I would recommend. Yeah. The fiscal year running. Yes. So the state's probably going to change to 67 after July 1st. Well, most likely. The project is going to 67. Is that going to affect the budget? Very not by that much. Okay. I just didn't know how much of that we got. So well, not, a, not a lot of people use the model. Okay. Well, I just didn't want to get us in a position where we are over on that too. So. Okay. So Commissioner Brevis made a motion to adopt the IRS 67 cents per mile. Do I have a second? I'll second. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Meal reimbursement verification. Meal reimbursement as stated, $15 per meal, total of $38 per day, can use $30 from two meals to make up for one. 
Receipts are required for each meal. If meals are included in registration of meeting, you cannot include those in per meal cost. Receipts need to be included prior to payment. The county will not pay for tips or alcoholic beverages. Um, what about uh, tax? Could we put the sales tax on? Or? Sales tax has to be paid on food. Yes, yeah, okay. And also, I wanted to ask, should we add any other verbiage as far as meal reimbursement locally? Like, I know the struggles we've had. Should there be any additional verbiage in this for us to approve and and, and put into the policy? I'm not sure, because this, yeah, because this is an excerpt from the policy. Okay. So. okay, so then we can... Do you, do you mean to reference out of town travel or something like that? Yeah, so we've had just a okay. couple instances and we've coached and hadn't got any. Um, it's still happening of like local lunches just periodically. So um, even though it's been coached not to do it and it's not explicit when I read this, it's not explicit. So for someone not asking and just reading this, I just feel like we maybe need to dial it down a little bit. I did in the notes, I added, um, it's a three fold flyer for the state of Kansas. They do have a little bit, their substance, um, substance expense, <laughs> can't say it, um, but they have a daily standard rate. Um, it's meals and incidental expenses reimbursement, and they have a little bit of verbiage and it's more of a travel um, while in travel status. Yes. So they have a paragraph in there that's on that that kind of changes the verbiage just a tad little bit that we maybe yeah, so we put our, our policies and yeah. do things. I feel like that would be a good idea. The dollar amount of this is on the low side. Yeah. But you know how many people actually buy meals in the travel? Because a lot of times it's conferences and food lunches and stuff. So it, mainly on the travel day. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe. Um, if it's a conference during the day, you'll get your lunch by the conference, but then right. not a, you'll have to have your, so your still dinner. Like 30 bucks. And it's like, something that we um, experienced when going to pay with CIC. So we stay in a hotel that's away from everything, and they only have two restaurants in that hotel. And you either, it's the fancy, or you go and have some sandwiches. And so we experienced that we would have to take both of our $15 ones to be able to pay for just one dinner and that they don't give us any for uh, breakfast. And so we were kind of like stuck with two to choose from. Yeah. And it was the cost that was the difference because even sub sandwich is 20 bucks now. So we approve this for now, but revisit it sometime this year before budget. Yeah, because I definitely think you need to add verbiage and maybe look at Okay. okay. So okay. moved to approve. Okay. Second. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Cell phone reimbursement verification. Current rates are $30 per month for voice calling only and $60 per month for voice, text, and data. If the department head authorizes the use of an employee's cell phone for the benefit of the county, and the employee voluntarily chooses to use his or her own cell phone for county business, the county will reimburse the individual at the rate authorized by the county. Request for this reimbursement must be made on the cell phone reimbursement form and submitted to the Human Resources Department. Reimbursement is taxable pursuant to IRS guidelines. Um, Voice calling was $30 per month. The rate was adjusted January 13th, 2020 in the commission meeting. Voice, text, and, and data was $60 per month. Rate adjusted January 13th, 2020 in commission meeting. Request for this reimbursement must be made on the cell phone reimbursement form and submitted to the Human Resources Department. The policy will not apply to employees of Atchison Senior Village. The administrator of Atchison Senior Village may set Reimbursement rates for Atchison Senior Village employees. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Verify Kansas Open Records Act cost for copies and research time. Copies cost 50 cents per one sided page. 
research cost $5 per quarter hour for service, for search. Review cost $7.50 per cap quarter hour for review. There's a motion to approve. So moved. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Resolution for waiving the gap for 2024 on. I have a resolution attached. Let me know what number I'm coming up with. 2024, 1532. I'm going to defer to Pat. I'm not sure. I figured you would let me. It's 1532. Okay. Resolution number 2024 1532. Whereas the County of Atchison, Kansas has determined that the financial statements and financial reports for the year ended 2024 to be prepared in conformity with the requirements of KSA 75-1120A -A, are not relevant to the requirements of the cash basis and budget laws of this state and are, and are of no significant value to the county commissioners or the members of the general public of the County of Atchison. And whereas there are no revenue bond ordinances or resolutions or other ordinances or resolutions of the municipality, which require financial statements and financial reports to be prepared in conformity with KSA 75-1120AA for the year ended 2024. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Atchison County Commissioners by the County Commissioners of County of Atchison, Kansas, in regular meeting duly assembled on this eighth day of January 2024, that the County Commissioners waive the requirements of KSA 75-1120AA as they apply to the County of Atchison for the year ended 2024. Be it further resolved that the County Commissioners shall cause the financial statements and financial reports of the County of Atchison to be prepared on the basis of cash receipts and the disbursements as adjusted to show compliance with the cash, cash basis and budget laws of the state. Sure. Um, okay, then moved and seconded. All the two papers say aye. 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 Number one. Yes. <laughs> um, number 18 is to discuss county government day and countywide cleanup day. What was it 18? Number 18. No, what days? Oh, oh, so for countywide cleanup day, uh, last year was our first year of doing it. And um, it was suggested to coincide with Earth Day. Um, so if we do that in similar uh, status, the Earth Day this year for 2024 is Monday, April 22nd. So that would make our cleanup Friday, April 19th, and Saturday the 20th. Okay, so let's get which direction we're going. Yeah. Okay. What was the dates again? April. Friday, April 19th, and Saturday, April 20th. So do I have a motion to approve countywide cleanup day um, for Friday, April 19th and Saturday, April 20th? Second. And second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Pass this three to zero. I need to look it up. Can we have a And is that referring to the one at the legislature? The can't give them a day because it's long they come in here. This is where the kids come to. Okay. And when was the last time one that we had? That pre COVID? So April, yes, it was pre COVID. 2024. It's on a commission meeting day or is it? 
it's typically on a commission meeting day yeah. because the commissioners would always go down to the legion for the um the elves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In years past, it was discussed about maybe having it in the fall instead of the spring. Is that an alternative? Is that good? Is that bad? I think that it coincided with the government studies in the school more right. than the spring, because when we were had it in the spring, kids were about ready to get out of school. It was kind of a, mm -hmm. almost, they were going out the door and it's street day. Right. So I, I, but again, we're pitting that up with elections. We're pitting that against uh, budget, budget hearings. So, I mean, it's just, I, I wanted to bring that up for discussion. That's a good point. I, I mean, you mentioned fall, it's also elections. That's, it is good time. Well, it is for maybe it would be good learning experience for the kids, but we also have to be mindful yeah. of who's doing the elections and right. and they also are big uh, planners of of that day and of the so government day. So who drives the date selection? I mean, is it curriculum at the school and the teachers? The kind of, mm -hmm. Okay, and it, it's it's very difficult to get all three of the area schools on the same day uh, sure. so there's been, there's been days we've only had two schools there was one day that we had one school and it was a large group um so mm -hmm. i don't know if we can come up with a day today that would because i mean if if we would want to prove it and then mm -hmm. just say at the discretion of the clerk to to uh, find a date that would work i mean is that well, if we do the fall if we do like in September, I guess it has the curve on some of your deadlines, I think. I mean, there's deadlines all year long. But... Um, yeah, I mean, September probably would be more doable than October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to create our own Atchison County Day. Okay. We, we used to have a county government day, um, and it was it was basically driven by the Atchison family, Mrs. Atchison, um, and... Uh, her family with the um, VFW. And, yes. Um, they would basically have the meal set up. So we would basically have what they did here. Seemed like we would meet in the courtroom and uh, maybe have a presentation about county government, uh, may, maybe be. Did the sheriff speak one year? Seemed like. Or it, it was it maybe it was internal maybe it was external it seemed like I believe the last time we had one Jamie did. she kind of took that and ran with that and then they broke up and they would go to different offices mm -hmm. and and uh, individual department head would show them what they done I think they actually toured to jail they when they um, when they would at school they would send the invitation to the school and the students would sign up under a certain division, either law enforcement, commissioners, county appraiser. And so all of the department heads basically would take on these five or six or 10. When certain law, law enforcement would take on 20 <laughs> because everybody wanted, wanted to go to her. But they would they would move around the courthouse no matter what department they were assigned to. So I was just thinking um, September would possibly be a good one for the fact that on that countywide cleanup day, all of our schools were involved in helping, and that's in April. So if we sent some informational thing to the schools, we could give them both dates as far as planning ahead purposes, maybe have a better turnout, like also mm -hmm. of communicating like, hey, we appreciated you last year, countywide cleanup dates this April, September, we're going to do, you know, something with your students for, for the government day. I don't know, just a thought, because the national county government month is april so like students can only do so many things right of like yeah, extra it's right. pretty busy it's yeah. mostly juniors and seniors or is it, yeah um, seniors maybe it's all seniors okay and at, at times i mean one year it was kind of late and you could tell that they were already halfway out the door yeah. you know and, oh, and understand. good point yeah <laughs> and i don't knock it because i was there once too but you know i'm just the best bang for the buck 
And especially, it would have been tradition. We'd been doing it as long as I can remember. It always, always done March or April. We had talked about it several times in the fall. Well, now that there's been a hesitation, we're really, if we're going to start it back up again, it might be a good opportunity to try it. And that gives us longer to plan and like get everybody to. So I guess I'm trying to figure who's who's leading this. Is this are we leading or we're going to ask the BFW or lead or somebody to lead? I mean, what's. Um, I will get a hold of Nancy Clifford probably okay. to see if they would still have an interest in helping out. Um, I mean, we can go from there because they did a good job of trying to contact the schools. Going to the schools to find out if we can get the children. What who's they, and who's Nancy? Uh, they are just a family. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. she was one of the disabled. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that would be cool. I, I just her because I know her. Okay, so we can. Okay. Yeah. And then you can give us start finding. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to come from us as far as like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe I don't know. I don't know. Cool. Get the safety committee involved. We're gonna put twenty high school kids in the jail. Maybe <laughs> 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 issues there. Okay, so we're going to table then any decisions on county government day until we have further information. Yes. Okay. Okay. So can I interrupt one more time because I do know that we do have the capital day. Oh yeah, those and, days. and there's two of those on the uh, right. KAC website. Looks like those up right. right. Yeah. Uh, and I did usually have a room. I didn't think to put them on. That's okay, but that's a good thought. We should get those. So one of those is the same day. It's dental day. It's also one of the county days. So I'll be there for sure that day. It's the 8th, February the 8th is one of the days. Okay, January 24th. 2024 local government day. Right, that's good. And February 8th is county day at the Capitol. Is it Thursday? Um, the county day at the Capitol is February 8th, 2024, beginning at 8 a.m. I'll be there that day, but I probably will be intermittent helping with any table or something. Okay. And then January 24th is the local government day. And then, do we usually go to that? We okay. have, yeah. Okay, so I've got to remember that morning. I can't change, but I can come in the later. So just going to see what the plan is. County Day at the Capitol is when we set up our booth. Yeah. That was in February. I and don't believe I've ever, personally, I have never been to one in January. So I, sure that one's so I feel like that was more of us taking a tour, visiting offices, watching the, like, I think we even got to watch, like, a hearing of. Yeah, there's probably something on purpose that day, you know, yeah. it was legislative contact day. So we'll have to dig okay. in. That was, well, we we done the same thing in February. I know we did, okay, yeah. Yeah, we went to the KDOT meeting. Um, and I know Joe and Kim and Wes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so so the local government day, they tag team with the League of Municipalities. And the we gather for an exciting, informative, le legislative focus day. Yep, that was that. I was so, schedule a hearing on some relevant bill that they, yeah. they do could do an LABTR bill that day or something. Who knows? Yeah. So that's what that was. <laughs> I more it just was that a... I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so just a day before. Yeah. And that event schedules just from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. So it's not like a whole... reception. Event, right. Probably. Yep. The oh, no, reception with months. legislators. What's from 1 to 7? The government days? Um, yes. That's one to seven. Yep. And the reception with legislators is at 5 p.m. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, I'm seeing And that's just what they have on their website, right? Now, right. 2024. So, okay. Number 19. 
approve the 2024 budget calendar. We have the proposed budget calendar. Shouldn't you be approving the 25 budget calendar? I'm oh, sorry. You're fine. That was me. Oh. <laughs> right by the Nope. Okay. So I look for a motion to approve the 2025 budget calendar as presented. Uh, I'll second. Okay. So do you want to ask them before? Yeah. So we were starting earlier, you said. Mm -hmm. So give me an example of how much earlier we are because I'm just, this is just a whole bunch of dates in front of me. So um, would like to have everything kind of set in the system and having our discussions by May. Um, so we kind of know what we're doing. So between May and August, there's a lot of room to have discussions with you three, with departments, um, able to run scenarios if you want to, um, and then have a like a hard deadline by the end of August. So we're ready to do everything we need to to the county clerk by September. So there's not a lot of deadlines that we have to get real you know, come up against, it's it's kind of all ironed out. So I guess what you're asking is, is by May 1st, kind of have everything in there starting point. as a starting point. Yeah. So it's, it's about a four or five weeks sooner than last year, yeah. probably. Oh, yeah, that's just what you're curious. Okay, okay uh, so it's been sorry. Well, in there, I, I don't know if this is pertinent or not, but if there is legislation passed, by the state that would affect our budget. When is that usually cooked in the books? So, I mean, because that could be something yeah. that first we, we yeah, first, first we may, may sign day. Okay. I was aware from the you know, second mm -hmm. to the eighth or so. I mean, I just couldn't I think it should be on the calendar. It's on the calendar because I've looked at it. Yeah, I just couldn't think of when that exactly that would be because, yeah. you know, that would really could change up what we're doing. So, thank okay. you. You did not much happen at that very last session of the school. It could be a hot issue. It could be a last minute, but that's one of the So it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Passes three to zero. Okay, so number 20 is the Rural Opportunity Zone Resolution for 2024, resolution number 2024-1533. Resolution of the Board of Atchison County Commissioners authorizing participation in Rural Opportunity Zone Student Loan Repayment Program for the calendar year of 2024. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Atchison County, Kansas, pursuant to KSA 2021-74-5223, the Board of County Commissioners expressed its intent to participate in the Rural Opportunity Zone Student Loan Repayment Program. Atchison County has been designated a Rural Opportunity Zone pursuant to KSA 2021, Supplement 74-50222 as of July 1st, 2023, the county population was 16,108 as certified by the Kansas Department of Revenue. Atchison County Commissioners hereby obligate Atchison County to participate in the RAWS Student Loan Repayment Program as provided by KSA 2021 Supplement 74-50223 for a period of five years, which shall be irrevocable. Atchison County agrees to pay in equal shares with the state of Kansas, the outstanding student loan balances of any resident individuals for five years if the resident individual meets the terms of qualification provided by the state of Kansas in KSA 2021 Supplement 74-5223 and the appropriate rules and regulations. The number of qualified resident individuals receiving such payments will be subject to the available availability of funds. 
Atchison County intends to enter into partnerships with cities, employers, and foundations for the direct sponsorship of Rural Opportunity Zone applicants. Sponsored applicants must meet all the qualifications of the Ross program. All sponsorships will be subject to Ross student loan repayment rules and regulations. The maximum amount maximum student loan balance for each qualified resident individual to be repaid jointly by Atchison County in the state of Kansas shall be 15000 over a term of five years. Atchison County shall allocate $0 a year for the purpose of matching payments for the state of Kansas to qualified resident individuals. Atchison County shall revise its Ross budget on an annual basis submitting a new resolution to the state of Kansas by January 30th each year. Atchison County shall submit their obligation in full to the Department of Commerce before the first day of October each year. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall be published once in the official county newspaper and shall be in effect from and after its date of publication. Do you have a motion to approve? Moved. Second. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. It was adopted by the Board of County Commissioners of Atchison County, Kansas, this eighth day of January 2024. Have we had any people that have used this program? That's probably because we allocate zero dollars a year to it. <laughs> Well, if somebody applied, I mean, would there be? No, because we don't have a budget for it. So we're allocating zero dollars again. So we would just be. I think it does allow other employers to use the yeah, program. They could. Yeah, but we're not oh, privy oh, to that. Okay. Yeah, but they could do that if we were. Yeah, because I think it's being utilized. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is just not access account. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Item number 21. Set the 2024 Canvas dates and election meeting dates. The dates below for the canvas of the presidential preference primary and the August primary will not require a special publication. Presidential preference primary will be Tuesday, March 19th. The county commission will have no meeting that day. The presidential preference primary canvas will be Monday, March 25th with a regular county commission meeting that day. August primary election will be Tuesday, August 6th, with no county commission meeting that day. August primary canvas will be Monday, August 12th, with a regular county commission meeting that day. November general election will be Tuesday, November 5th, with no county commission meeting that day. And November election canvas will be Tuesday, November 12th, which is due to the Veterans Day holiday. And we will have our regular county commission meeting that day. I would like to ask that there be no regular meetings on the three election days, March 19th, August 6th, and November 5th. So moved. Okay. Um, I'll second the question. Okay. Um, I mean, that's four meetings or three meetings that we were canceling. Could, would there be any appetite to move them later in the week or do something like that? I just, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there because they're, they're pretty spread out. So it helps a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I don't, can't think of anything. I just thought it was worth discussing maybe moving the day. And I know the next day would be out basically too because of, the busyness of the clerk's office. But. On Monday, I basically take equipment out. Um, on Wednesday, I basically go out and pick it up. Thursday, we have our um, audit. audit. Thank you, our state audit. On those three dates, is there anything that's close on the uh, uh, budget calendar that would interfere? No, I just reviewed it. No. Okay. All right, but then, and then I'm fine with it. I just kind of was thinking in my head that. So the only thing I guess I I agree and I would ask um, the finance director is it felt like, it feels like we need every amount of time we can when we're doing the budget. 
um, just for us with you. Um, but if you feel like that we're fine with that March 19th, not, or if we should do later in the week and, and be available for you to work. I think it would be okay. We're good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I suspect what we may need to do is the week before or after this, we may want to do a longer meeting at the workshop. Maybe that's a good idea to kind of pick up time. So we might kind of we might want to plan ahead a little bit. We might look at that mark, see what's better. It's right before or after. Yeah. Just have a couple hour budget workshop added to the meeting. I just know there's so much within one week of us together. Mm -hmm. Together. Two weeks is like I do believe that there was one day um during one of the elections, we didn't have the meeting on Tuesday, but I think they called for a special election because something needed to get signed. So that yeah. all we need special meeting. Special meeting. Special yeah. meeting yeah. that yeah. they yeah. take yeah. along and just not yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that can be just kind of done yeah. as needed. Yeah. 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 That's Thank a good idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes yeah. three to zero. And that wraps up. The last item of our Atchison County Organizational Meeting. Next on the agenda, we have an executive session for 15 minutes, non-elected personnel, commission, HR, and county council. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners recess an executive session at 11.06 a.m. to discuss personnel matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319-B1, and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee, and that the Board come out of executive session in 15 minutes in the commission room at Fort House Basement, and those present will be uh, the three commissioners, HR and County Council. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Passes three to zero. Okay. We are back in open session. Um, running a bit behind schedule. Um, is the county attorney possibly out there? She's not. Okay. She's online. She's online. Oh, perfect. Okay. So we have an executive session, non-elected personnel, 30 minutes, county attorney, commissioners, HR, and finance. I'll move with the board of county commissioners recess into executive session at 11.22 a.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-4319-B1. And that the purpose of this closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and that the board come out of executive session in 30 minutes in the commission room of the uh, courthouse basement. And those present will be uh, the three commissioners, uh, HR, uh, county attorney, and finance director. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Let's go into executive session. Oh, sorry. Okay, we are back in open session. Um, and Mark Zeldner, Finance Director for the KCAMP Overview Discussion. Good morning. Good morning. So I sent an email to you all um, just a, a little overview of what we received from KCAMP. But um, we had the annual contribution for 2024. The amount um, is $309,090. Um, it's way higher than what we were estimated to have for our 2024 rate. Um, in June of last year, um, we had an estimate back of 5% increase, and this is way over that, about 30% increase. Um, we received a letter from our KCAMP insurance stating that it uh, the rates had went up for property values, loss severity, and reinsurance costs. Um, along with that, several or all of the deductibles changed from 
auto to the mobile equipment, such as um, heavy equipment like at Road and Bridge, um, the property, uh, storm damage. There was a, a deductible added for storms. Um, and then other mobile equipment. So that could be like equipment in a police vehicle or an ambulance or anything. So we can have a claim on equipment inside of a vehicle too. Um, so that is pretty substantial in our amount. And it's going to be over budget from what we... What was the 230000 And then 25000 of that it is, would be additional from Senior Village portion. So Senior Village budgets 25000 for their uh, portion. And then the county is two hundred thirty. So 255, I guess. And the senior village will be prorated? It will be. So we'll okay. get um, our premium back okay. if and when the data that is is sold. Okay. Um, so I guess just letting you know that it, it's over and um, there's a purchase order that I had sent to you all. Um, I have... It, it's... Dated for January 1, we still have coverage, um, but the dues are, or the contribution is due now, so. So based on the $80,000 increase, mm -hmm. on top of increasing our deductibles, that doesn't add up to me. Because typically when you increase your deductible, it's less risk on them, so the yep. rates are. Yep. So in this letter, they talk about a convective storm damage claims. So there are multiple claims um, and all of their pooled associates and with storm damage, they are claiming that they need to recoup some of the costs. <clears throat> Is that specific to Atchison because we had the lightning strike or that's no, it, in general, it, all, all of their pool had storm damage? Correct. That's why to me, insurance. if you were going to read who, I could understand okay. the raise in price, but I can read the then... paragraph maybe that will help. Sure. Um, in recent years, there have been significant increases in member property valuations as a result of an inflationary impact on building materials and labor costs. At the same time, K Camp members have suffered multiple catastrophic convective storm losses because property losses above K Camp's pooling layer of $350,000 are transferred to reinsurance, K-Camp's primary reinsurer is absorbing more of the costs to recover from convective storms. Some of K-Camp's other reinsurers have incurred catastrophic convective storm losses outside of Kansas as well. As a result, K-Camp's property reinsurance costs nearly doubled in the 23 to 24 program year. Um, and that's about all it says. We're changing to rates, changing to deductibles, um, kind of outlined these changes here. So. so, yes, basically to storm damage, um, they need to recoup some of the costs. So our deductibles are increased and our premium is increased. You said some of the deductibles were to 1,000 to 2,500. Yeah, so auto, mobile equipment, property and equipment breakdown. I'm sorry, auto and mobile equipment went from 1,000 to 2,500. Property and equipment breakdown went from 1,000 to 5,000. And they added convective storm, which was included in property before at 1,000 and now it's 10,000. I looked at convective storm, thank you, I'm sorry. It's a severe storm with thunder and lightning. So we get those occasionally, mm -hmm. it's like a lot. So I think this is a recipe for lots of deductibles. I mean, uh, when lightning strikes some work, if it, there's minor damage, it still costs us five or 6,000 bucks as a deductible. I think we need to shop it. I almost think we have calls into how uh, solvent are they, or, yeah. you know, that, okay, we had, this one larger than normal year, which statistically that ought to be accounted for in their pool. So, mm -hmm. I mean, right. it, 
also when you recoup funds expended, to me that would be a recipe for making up for the, the costs that they've already paid out. But then the deductibles, I mean, they're it's almost like they're making up for it twice. The deductibles are future things that I don't I don't know. It just seems like it's a, a double dip. I agree. I would be in favor of having Mark drop um the insurance as well and reach out to, you know, you can post something that we're looking and reach out to a few of them and see if anyone reaches out to you and 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 get some comparables because that that doesn't seem right. Like I can it just doesn't like mm -hmm. the rate increase and the deductible increase. I'm like you're double dip, it feels like. We also talked to the workshop a little bit about the bylaws, so we don't have to mm -hmm. copy those. So uh, let's let's reach out to Michelle. She's on there, but not maybe getting okay. camp's bylaws that we're subject to, so we can find out what some of the ground rules are about moving forward here. Okay. It could also be a possibility to have uh, the representative from KCAN come. You guys. Well. Yeah, I'd let them know right up front that we're looking. I wouldn't hesitate to let them out. So the purchase order for KCAMP, um, look for a motion to table. So moved. Yeah, second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Pass three to zero. <clears throat> okay, um, the next item is K work. Uh, there's a purchase order for our workers' compensation. Um, premium for 2024, and it's $142,589. 589 thank you. Yep. So I look for a motion to approve the purchase order to K work in the amount of $142,589 for the 2024 premium. So move, I have a question. Okay. Second. Okay. What was the cost? Uh, last year, what's the difference? I mean, the claims, no, the actual premium cost difference. Oh, this is like the tax rate should know this. You mean between carrot? Yeah, what was that difference? Well, that's but that's not there's a lot more to it than just oh, the, I understand that. Just, just the premium alone, we can talk about the other things. This would start with this. So, $133,485. However, that is with discounts taken out of it. So, before that is $206,966. Yeah. So, we get a premium discount and a discount for being saved. Um, so, the, the final expense was what again? One, so comparing apples to apples, 206,966 minus 142,589. Correct. Right. Right. 64,377. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. Passes three to zero. Thank you. You just save sixty four thousand dollars here. I know, and then and you get mail pass it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, we have um, executive session. Non elected personnel, thirty minutes. Senior village, HR commissioners. I'm going to board of county commissioners recess and excuse me recess and executive session at 12:03 p.m. to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel as allowed by KSA 75-43 and 19B2 no excuse me yeah B1 and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the privacy rights of the employee and the board come out of executive session in 30 minutes. Uh, in the commission room of the courthouse basement, those present will be three commissioners, HR, and senior village admin. Second. Okay. 
It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay, perfect. Please. 20 minutes. Is Pat back in the area? I, he may be in though. Pat, Chip, and Mark. Rick. Yep. Snowing out there. Just everyone. <laughs> it's nice and chill. Thank you, Lindsay. You good? Oh, I think I. Yeah. Hey. All right. Yeah, at least I muted you. You're fine. We're back in open session. Do you need anything else? Um, not I don't think so. Yeah, we we'll do that other one maybe next week that was suggested. Okay. Let me know. Yep. Are we ready? Yep. Number of the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session at 12.34 p.m. for consultation with an attorney to the public body, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship as allowed by KSA 75-4319B2, and that the purpose of the closed session is to protect the confidentiality of the discussion and that the board come out of, exec come out of executive session at in 20 minutes in the commission room, courthouse basement, and those present will be uh, three commissioners, uh, uh, Pat, Joe, and Mark. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay. Yeah. okay, we are back in open session. Um, unfinished business. Do we want to discuss the snow day policy? Um, historically, They've contacted the chair um, and just wanted to talk through, like, it's been on my mind and thinking through, like, what that decision affects. And so I was just wondering your thoughts on on closing everything down for, for snow days, how you guys feel about that. No. <laughs> you know? I, so after drawing it out, I'm I'm there. And it's like, you don't really realize it until you start looking at, I mean, majority of our departments have to work anyway in some capacity, whether it's back round support um, and then the others are elected serving the public. So um, also learning more about the, the courts and the jury trials and statutorily the list doesn't include weather. Like when they have trials, we don't want people to show up and the courthouse be locked. So I'm on that wavelength, but I wanted to have that conversation so yeah. we can talk. We can talk through it. Of that way, HR knows how to answer questions, and department heads know, you know, that they need to. Well, then how will it work? I mean, just saying we're not going to do it like we did before. I mean, so how we will... won't. So we won't close down. It'll be at the discretion of. I mean, because so Sheriff, EMS, Road and Bridge, Solid Waste, like, don't close down. HR, IT, maintenance, our background support. They Like, when we're running, we're running. They're cleaning Senior Village, you know, Senior Village can't. They're taking care of people. I'd say all our department heads that we administer, are, we're open. The court has to be open. And on the elected, that's up to them. But I'll give you an example. I don't know what the sheriff's going to do. Or EMS is going to do, but they're going to be operating either way. But they may choose not to have their administrative folks come in or something. I mean, that's, that's, their, their, that's their call. Yeah. yeah, their call. So to me, it's uh, we we're open. We serve the public, and the department, elected department heads want to do something differently. That's on them. Okay. So may I? Yeah. So when we're checking the roads and they're horrible and everything's drifted, do we still kind of go through the same process and then Wes gets a hold of you or? Well, so that's what we're talking know? about of like, we won't, we're not going to close, close okay. down. All right. All right. But do you want to know how bad the roads are? Or are you like concerned about that? I mean, I think if it's, so if that's the, like, if you guys would want to send an email or something to department heads for them to make those decisions but as far as how to staff their office but as far as serving the public will be open like we won't close the so we, county. we normally you know uh, <clears throat> bridge puts out 
and we try to tell what the rents are like. Right. You know, updates. I think stuff like that. Yeah. So okay, that's what no, is it, how do you put that out? On Facebook, okay. on our Facebook page, so we can actually, I think we'll talk to West Coast the county. Because does it show up on the county website? I don't know. I don't remember. Look, I'll talk to So them. so I saw the closings like last night on social media. Um, and so that was one of the things like typically would we have closed because we couldn't because we have things to do. <laughs> so right. it just doesn't feel right. Like would the, the courts have things to do, you know, like I, yeah. we shouldn't inhibit other people. No, I know like 377 will call and talk to me and I will talk to them. They're the only ones that really yeah. contact. Right. Right. Yeah. Schools are some different. So, right. Right. so uh <clears throat> The department heads would need to, if they're going to close, they need to contact, put it on Facebook, or they need to put the elected individual. Elected. Hmm? Being the elected. Elected. So only, so all other department heads. Well, they're all working anyway. <laughs> well, so it's like we found in the past, right? It's like we can create a policy. So the county's not going to shut down for weather inclination. Like each department can staff accordingly and make those decisions um and then if someone were to choose to do something outside of that they have to figure you know it's they have to figure out how to i don't think they will i think they'll go but i think electeds will do what what the county is doing yeah they but, might do minimal staffing and they might because there'll be less people. and every department's going to be different like based on what their needs are so Thank you. Uh, County Councilor updates. Yeah. Um, we filed a motion for uh, judgment on the pleadings and the tax sale hearing is January 22nd. And at that, that day, we'll, we'll probably uh, set the date for the tax sale, which I still expect to be in February. Okay. How many properties are still on there? That's all right. Don't need to look it up. Um, it's just, yeah. I, I can look real quick. It, uh, I Thirty-two, but there were sixty-seven originally, and thirty-five are off. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any need for any more executive sessions? I would like to have one, but we can go ahead and do that after. Okay. And it'll be very short. Okay. Uh, approval of expenses. Do I have a motion to approve this week's expenses? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Public comment. Hi, that's yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry about my voice. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, I'm Mary Jane Sellers, Walnut Township. And we got our email from um, Pat Henderson that um, he threw out our uh, names that we collected, informing us that we didn't fill out the petition correctly. And I just want to be made to all of you guys that. We filled it out the way Michelle Phillips told us to fill it out. She told us to do the names and then just underneath there write what the problems were, you know, and, you know, very vaguely. And that's all. She did not tell us all what to do that what you told us to do in that email. And um, so it's not, we feel like that this is not right because we did what she told us to do. And we went out and got all these names, which took a lot of time an effort to do that. And most of the time, every one of them has been following this on Facebook and everything. Um, so we're sort of really upset because now, you know, do we go hire a lawyer to write this out for us the correct way? Is there, I mean, because everybody knew what it's on there and we did what we were told to do by Michelle Phillips. If that, if that was wrong, then she doesn't know what she's doing up there and told us that. 
And now we wasted right. all that time after you sent out those emails. Yeah. I, I can't speak to what happened in a meeting with someone else that I, I wasn't there for, but the statutes, I know she gave you the statutes. Mm -hmm. The statutes make clear that you're supposed to get the question vetted prior to getting the signatures. And that, that wasn't done. No. And it wasn't done because we weren't told. Yeah. We get she gave us those papers and, and told us the now. As I I had not discussed this with the commission, so they don't know what had happened, but there had been a uh, I believe on Thursday of last week, a uh, recall petition submitted uh regarding the treasurer of Walnut Township. And by statute then the uh um uh, I am to review that uh, to determine the uh, whether or not all the legal requirements have been met. And I got that out on Friday, uh, five business days, I think is what's in the statute, but I wanted to get it out quickly. And three. Out she told us, she told us three. Um, Should we just ask her to come down? I emailed well, her, but I don't know I don't. if she's checking her email. Maybe. Well, I, I don't know that there's really anything for, for you all to do um, other than to be aware of the situation that's going on. As I mentioned in the letter, I would be happy to, I can't write it for you. Um, I can't give you advice, but I can dialogue with you about what to put in there. So we, we could talk about it some and you'd have to draft it, but I uh, we could, I, I think it's fixable. It's uh, fixable, but yeah, but yeah, we have to go out and go to all those people. We have way over enough names to cover this. Way what, over. What's the required number? She told us 90 some, 80, 87 and 90 some. We got 114. So, because she said someone might not clear, because we asked for the um, Walnut Township registered voter list three times, and we never got it either. Um, so, we just went out and started knocking on doors. And I said, I at least want 100. And then people was calling us wanting to sign it too. So our total number is 114. Well, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to go to get 114 more names, the same ones, but they're going to ask why and, and all this, all because we wasn't told how to fill this out properly. We don't know why, you know, you could just, we could do what you just said. And can we attach it to our same list? No. Why do so why do we have to go back to 114 people when we were just doing, we wasn't told correctly. It just seems like everything that's going against Walnut Township, we're going to hell in a handbasket. Because every time we try to do something, there's another issue that comes up. Well, the statute sets out the procedure to be followed. And, and so why and didn't she tell us that? Well, you, you'd have to take that up with her. Well, then that's why I want to uh, talk to her. Let me ask, let me, let me, we'll need to treat this. Okay. I mean, this. I mean, this is really not our role. I mean, the role is really this is between them and Michelle. I mean, to figure it out. I mean, that's what you have to go through. Yeah, I just thought that's willing to give them some instructions at least on what to put on there. Yeah. It's so, a, so guess. what was done incorrectly? Well, essentially, the question was too vague. The um, they have to put on there for the people to sign the the, the reasons for the justification for. The recall and you can't just do a recall because we want somebody else there has there are statutory bases for recall and they have to include a factual statement not to exceed 200 words to describe what factually the person did that makes them worthy so, of recall factually and, him not doing his job duties and violating all the open Okay, that's not an act. The, the difference you need to know, between like, saying wrote a check for forty grand and only used one okay, signature. Right. Would that be a fact? That would be a fact. But yeah. everybody, everybody knew that because they're all been following. I think I know. Yeah. Well, but okay, but he still wasn't following the Open Book Act. I mean, we had two reasons why, and that should have covered everything. That it don't. But you, you didn't include factual statements, so it's one thing to say there is a violation of the Open Meetings Act. It's you another to say. That mm -hmm. in September, well, that's a conclusion, I guess. So you need to a say that in, in September, yeah. two members of the board met at a place other than the regular meeting spot, spot without giving notice and not on a regular meeting date and discussed affairs of the, the township. That would be a factual statement. 
and this didn't include factual statements. So it lacked description. It lacked but specificity. If we were told that, we would have done that. Oh. And now we have to go back and redo all that, all the footsteps, all knocking on the doors and everything because we wasn't told that we had the right way to fill out the petition. No. But the people that are signing that are, you know, theoretically they read it and they have to know what the... And they read that part, but they all knew about it because they've all been following it on the township, on the township page. Because they all, every single one of them, I know, ask about that $30,000 check. You know, I also pointed out in that letter, you have the right to appeal my decision, have the matter heard by a district judge by filing a mandamus action in the district court within 30 days. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're free to do that as well if you disagree with the, the reasoning. But uh, uh, there's you know, a Kansas Supreme okay Court case. If you would have told us how to fill that out properly. So we fill it out how you told us to fill it out. It's not meeting. Okay, I just so for me, I kind of want to understand it. It's okay. like you're you're. It feels like Walnut Township again, in here. I mean, I'm I understand your problems, but I, I think this is the problem you guys need to go figure out. It's not a county. We've been trying problem. to figure it out, but every time yeah. we hit a rock wall because somebody okay. brings up stuff that we're not doing correctly. Okay, well, and, and we have now's to time to sit down and listen. Do think, <laughs> may I join your conversation at least for learning afterwards? I just, because I feel those questions too, and I never have answers. So it's like me of like, not, not a thing. I'm just literally learning to understand it better and to, to understand Because like to Pat's example of, of the more specific on September, whatever these two people met, like in my brain is like, I could say that, but how do I prove that? Like, how do you, how do you prove that Eric and I met this time when it's kind of accusations, right? No, I'm, I'm just trying to learn. It is accusations and there isn't really a trial at it. The trial, if you will, is determined by the voters. The okay. voters decide whether or not those facts are, are, so the, are true or not true. Okay, so the facts on the petition, the folks are signing their name, validating that these facts are true based on what is said in the meetings yeah. or recorded in the meetings or- I guess or, you could look at it that way, yeah. Okay. I would say more it's like we uh, agree to have a judgment by the voters of these facts. I mean, the way I would interpret that. But again, no. Yeah, I've just, yeah. We've never been down this road or through this. So I'm just trying to understand. Them. So we sat down and they made a list of all the stuff that um, was not done correctly. So okay. if we bring that to you, you'll go over it. I will go over it with you. Okay. I, I, I I won't write your factual statement for you. I can't do that. But are you going to tell us if it's right or wrong? If it's going to be wrong yeah. again, under the statute, don't want to do it. it's supposed to be vetted before you circulate it. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I, I would so definitely, you look so I would definitely give you that advice before. before and it what does it have to be drafted on? I'm sure that's going to make a difference too. A petition paper or what? Yeah, that's one of the problems with that form. Is it really isn't big enough to put in. A factual statement, and we'll we'll be able to. Well, I don't even tell you to do what you just said, and she yeah. didn't even tell us to do what you yeah. said we had to do. The, the form's not perfect for sure. I, I'm sure we can we can get it. Uh, we can get it on a form that works, and then I think you would just photocopy that one page instead of uh, instead of uh, handwriting it out. I, I think 14 times, I think you have 14 pages. So yeah, so that would be easier to do it that way. So when can you meet with, with us to, to, to do this? Do you have uh, those notes prepared yet? Mm -hmm. I don't have them with me, they're with Gary. Gary was busy with township stuff today. Okay, well. It's snowing now. Uh, if you wanna do it after this meeting, we could do it then or- if you I don't have the notes with me. Okay, do you wanna do it late this afternoon? Um, I can do it tomorrow because we I, we were supposed to have a meeting and we're not having a meeting, so I've got time tomorrow morning. Okay. I've got time tomorrow pretty much any time. Yeah, think. let's just do it tomorrow, then I'll go down to Gary and get the min minutes and... Or Gary can do that with me. Yeah, and Gary can come too. The morning would be best for me. Tomorrow morning, okay. At what time? Um, Say 11. Calling right now and see if that's good. And should we just meet right here? Sure. Can I call him and see if that's good for him? 
Sure. So you'll meet on this topic tomorrow then. Yeah. Hey, it's Mary Jane. Hey, um, can we come up um tomorrow with that paper that you made of all the you know all the problems and stuff? Yeah, no, that's and meet with Pat right. Henderson and he's gonna help us um sort of form it up, but he you know can't help us help us, but he can look at all the stuff we did and get it on the correct form. Can you come up? Can you meet with me tomorrow at 11? Okay, up here in the county commissioner's room tomorrow at 11. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Right. Okay, so that sounds great. The meetings as okay. casual statements, like parts of the meetings. I know. Tell me about it. That okay, we're still up here. Like, I don't think that, that was one of yeah. the so I got to Like, go. is it better to reference but, things that happen but, in the meetings so there's proof versus... Well, yeah, that's... That's up to the people doing the division. I was just curious. What yes, is. tomorrow at 11 is fine. Okay, we'll be right here. And then can you get some more of the, the correct petitions or whatever that we need the copies of? Like, you know, yeah. at least 14. Yeah. I hope you we, just one of But no, the signature one. We have to go get the re-signature ones. Okay. Okay. That's fine, too. Let's go. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Did you want to say anything? Anyway, you guys need me for anything? Nope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say, when they came in for questions, I gave them the information on the petition. I gave them the information on the statutes, where to find them, and I told them to read them. Okay. I We even made comment about having the petition checked because I know when people run for office, it does not have to be checked. But any other petition should be checked by either the county council or the county attorney. I made comment to that. I said, just read your statutes and make sure that things are being done correctly. It's not going to matter, though. It's all on me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay. Seeing none, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I was going to do that. Executive session. Oh, I'm sorry about yeah, that. Thank just, you. Uh, a sorry, that was. Oops, yeah, uh, sorry. I'll move with that the Board of County Commissioners recess into executive session. And then 1 15 uh, p.m. for consultation with an attorney for the public body, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship at the Lodge Bay KSA 75 4319 B2. And the purpose of the closed session is to protect the confidentiality of the discussion that the board come out of executive session in 10 minutes in the commission room courthouse basement. And those present will be the three commissioners and Pat Henderson. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero. We're heading into the executive session. That's not, I mean, that's yeah, just yeah. asking I've, political. Um, so we are back in <laughs> open session and look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes three to zero.